it is on? Yeah. Hi guys, DJ Max here. Um, I got a question about um, the Nanopad, the Korg Nanopad, and uh, how to integrate it with the virtual vinyl system and like um, uh, hardware uh, mixer and uh, time codes. Here, let me show you what's going on here, and uh, I'll show you what's going on. Um, sorry, I haven't gotten a like a camera like a real camera and uh, well that's the dog over there hope you guys can hear me okay this is uh this is my setup here I have nothing too fancy and um, I have the Stanton um, T62s I have two of them and um, the reason it's uh, very simple um, I'm not by any means a scratch DJ so uh, they're perfect for me uh, they don't have a lot of torque which is a main feature for the scratch, uh, scratching DJ uh, but if you're only going to use them for the purpose of uh, beat matching uh, they're, they're pretty cool but um, anyways I'm not really going to go into uh, depth onto the turntables here and uh, yes I'm running a, a tractor time codes the reason I'm running a tractor time codes it's uh, because their signal, their time coded signal is running at 2 kilohertz uh, which is uh, th it's really loud especially on the, with this um, set of speakers right here you can get really loud, it can get really uh, thumpy and uh, the signal being um, strong uh, it's at 2 kilohertz um, they, they've just uh, perform they have performed uh, better for me um, I've used the Scratch Live or the Serato time codes as well and uh, they work they work just fine anyways um, this is a DDM 4000 uh, which I think I'm, I'm gonna be doing a tutorial on it too it's a very very great uh, mixer from uh, Behringer Behringer sorry and uh, it, it's uh, a full feature 24-bit um, digital mixer and uh, you can integrate it and I'm, uh, I'm using the Maya 44 uh, to get the time code signal into the computer up here and uh, then out to the mixer but uh, the guy I wanted to talk about today it's this guy right here this is the Korg uh, nano pad uh, now what does it do well it it is nothing but a MIDI controller um, or a trigger uh, a sample trigger uh, it can do a lot of things, especially if you use it with Ableton. Ableton Live has got this feature. It's not a mouse pad. A lot of people think this is a mouse pad. It's not a mouse pad. Um, you use it along with uh, this button here. I don't know if you can see it. It says roll, um, flam, and hold. Those three buttons are used with this. And uh, I'm not going to talk about those features because actually I never used it. Um, as you can see it's got. 12 buttons, uh, 12 black buttons here, and uh, it can go uh, 12 times 3, which you can see here at the scenes. I'm at scene 1, scene 2, I press it again, it goes to uh, scene 3, and then uh, back to um, scene 1. Actually, no, I'm sorry, it's 12 times 4, so that's uh, 48 different commands. I use it here on the uh, on my um, uh, flight case, let me give it some little more slack here. Um, and the reason I, I, I chose to get the Korg Nano Pad is because um, I don't like touching the computer too much, especially when I'm DJing, um, because uh, all that I have here is pretty much just the this thing and the mouse and uh, the nano pad gives you a lot of uh, freedom now the question was how do you map it to uh, virtual DJ well it's very simple let me open here virtual DJ by the way I'm running a portable version of uh, virtual DJ um, and I do that so that I can run it pretty much on uh, any computer any computer I hook up my uh, hard drive to it will just uh, um, start and it will bring up my history, my uh, crates, playlists, 
um, etc. So anyways, right now I think I have it, uh, I'm going to go to the sampler section of Virtual DJ right here, you can see it right there, and if I press this button here, this one, you're going to hear the siren. See, so I'm just... And you can pretty much map it to do anything you want. Um, and it's very simple to configure. You go to the setup part here of Virtual DJ, and then you go to um, Mappers, which is right there. I, I have no idea if you can even see but you go to mappers the mappers tab and um, my, it's going to bring the list here of um, what devices do you have uh, which right now it's either the keyboard or the cord nano pad and as you can tell I'm only using uh, 11 buttons out of the 48 commands or yeah 48 commands I have the sync button I have the deck one effect deck to effect a sampler and uh, to make loops and uh, uh, I'm gonna actually switch from scenes here to um, teach you but if you have it just go to like scene one but just for purposes of this tutorial I'm going to use like scene four right there okay and uh, you're gonna see like right there Okay, let's say that I want this key right here to um, trigger the or, or to make it to make the sync button. This button right here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, you're going to hit key learn, and then you hit the button right here. I'm going to press it, and you're going to see right there. Look, one, two, three. There you go. It's uh, SC4, which stands for scene 4, B7, button 7, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? And uh, then we go to action learn. Okay? Um, as soon as I click this, it's going to take me out, and I, well, you'll see. I click action learn, and I want it to um, learn that every time I press that button, it's going to go to sync right there boom see and it opened the menu again so now every time I press this button on this scene that's very important um, it's going to act as the sync button now I want let's say I want this button to uh, be the cue button for deck A so once again we go to key learn we go to this button right here and you're going to see the change right there see now it changed to SC4 B8 which stands for scene 4 button number 8 okay and uh, we're going to go to uh, action learn and uh, I want it to be the Q button for this deck which it's going to be deck um, A so I click Q button see right there so now every time I hit this button is going to be the cue for deck number A now let's say I want this button to trigger an effect on deck B okay so once again we go up here to uh, key learn we're gonna press this button on the nano pad right there and you're gonna see how it changes now it's SC4, B6, scene 4, bo uh, button 6, and uh, we're going to go to action learn. And uh, I want it to trigger this effect right here. The, let's see, the break. Right there. See? And uh, it's right there. SC4, B6, um, effect 3, active. 
Okay. So pretty much that's the process of um, doing it, of mapping the nanopad to the to virtual DJ software. Now I'm gonna go back to scene one here and uh, show you uh, no, hang on. <laughs> I'm gonna go, I don't know, let's say to history here and um, I'm gonna play this song right here. Okay? And, uh, well, in my case, sorry, I have the, let me lower the volume here a little, I have the time coach. Yeah, that is a moonflower that I'm running. So, anyways, so here goes. Let me just lower the volume a little. Now, let's say that I want to load this other track, which I just did. I load another track here. And, um,. Let's say the BPM for this is 130, right? Against 128. So if I click this button right here, it's going to sync it. See? 128, 128. Now that helps me, you know, the, it helps you with the guesswork when you're uh, mixing. Um, now, with time codes, you can't really depend on the sync button, but here, let me show you. It's already at, they're both already at 128. Here, just let me move here to the outro of this song. Okay. Drop it right here. It's really easy to mix with time codes actually. Because it gives you a different feeling of things. And uh, it's it's all practice. Yeah, I got this one running, this one running. I sync them, you know, just to match the, the BPM. But uh, you have to be actually really careful. Don't depend, I mean, don't start this time code and hit the sync button and expect it to be on beat. Um, you have to do, actually, sometimes you have to use the, the, the pitch control here to, like, make it match. Or um, use, uh, you know, just slow it down there. Pull. Or, or push. Whatever you're doing there. So, that's it. That is the core nanopad and how you integrate it on a virtual vinyl uh, setup. Okay. Uh, I'll be doing more tutorials, guys, uh, mainly on how to hook up this uh, time codes using the Maya 44 and um, this mixer right here and uh, mixing out of the music of your computer, which, as you can tell, if I do that, it just mimics what I, wh whatever I'm doing. And uh, let me tell you guys, it is awesome. It's awesome to mix with uh, time codes. You have a lot of fun. All right, guys, have fun.